Hello viewers, welcome to Bytham YouTube video channel and in this video I will demonstrate how to service mechanical, sorry, hydraulic disc, bicycle disc brakes uh, in this case it's uh, Shimano Deore and I will show the procedure of cleaning and bleeding the disc brakes. Now, first thing that we need to do is to remove brake pads because we don't want them to be contaminated and we need to insert bleed block in order to perform the bleeding process properly and here it's got some safety pin that is do-it-yourself type some so that's Serbian improvisation wildly, wildly known, known we will need to remove it okay it's out we will put uh, original and better proper safety pin once it's all done. Now we need to push the pads out depending on the model particular they are either pushed from one side or another. In this case they have like small hooks here to catch on to so they need to be pushed out from this side and I will try using this tool to push them out. So I have pushed them out enough to take a hold from this side and now I'll pull out the pads completely. Okay, they're out. I'll put them away so they don't get contaminated by any brake fluid. And when doing uh, brake bleeding you can expect the brake fluid to be spilled around so wheels because we don't want this to be contaminated need to be removed and also if you, especially if you're using dot fluid, which is uh, usual with SRAM brakes, it's good to use some paper towels to prevent the dot fluid from uh, squirting over the, the bicycle frame, because uh, dot fluid uh, damages the paint. Mineral oil is not that problematic, but still we want to avoid pad contamination, so I will not be touching this with my hands, breaking surfaces. I will clean them with this brake cleaner before putting them back. These are not very much worn and I will definitely would want to remove the wheels. So we'll put them aside for now. Safe distance. Okay. Now, before we start the bleeding process, pistons need to be pushed all the way back. Here that is the case. They are practically all the way back. Now, if you want to, if you have any problems with uh, the brakes, functioning in terms that uh, one pad is not uh, does not retract enough in that case you need to clean brake pistons in order to do that you need to pump the brake lever in order to push one piston out while you are holding the other piston preventing it from going out with a tool like this or something improvised or you can hold it pressed against this while well, this is mounted onto something solid so you have a free hand to pump the lever and then just push one of the pistons out for about 5 millimeters or so then use an old toothbrush with some brake fluid if it is a dot brake then use dot brake fluid if it is a mineral brake fluid then use that and smear that on the toothbrush and try to clean all the way around so that cylinder brake cylinder piston sides are cleaned. The, the side that faces outwards is not important for that function. After that is done on both uh, brake pistons, one at a time, or all four if, if a brake has more brake pistons, you need to use a tool like this to push them all the way back so that you can insert a bleeding block. In order to insert the bleeding block, these brake mounts sometimes get in the way, sometimes not. If they get in the way, you need to loosen the bolts that hold them, so they can be pushed. Okay, and it's in. So I put it in, and now I'll use the this improvised to prevent it from dropping out accidentally. Okay, here it is. Now I will, I will uh, as I demonstrated and explained in the videos previous to this one that explained the working principle, we need to pay attention to make sure that the part on the brake lever that is used for 
adding oil is upwards and parallel to the ground. Sometimes like this you have op you open you approach the whole uh, break uh, like a s small small tub of full of oil, or you have just one small opening for adding a inserting a syringe or some sort of to screw in. Some Shimano models have like a small opening so that there is no cover to be detached in which case you need to something like this to screw it in so that it can be filled with brake oil so that no air enters from the, the top and it has a small plug so it can be plugged so that when it is removed there is no leaking. We will not be needing this for this particular brake model so I will put it back. Ok, now back to this model. The other part is where the bleed screw of the caliper is mounted. We need to make sure that the caliper is put so that it is facing upwards so that any air can freely go out of the system. We don't want it parallel to the ground or bot bottoms up. And uh, in order to achieve that, when this is mounted on a bicycle, sometimes you need to rotate the bicycle stand in order to make it all properly set. Okay, so when this is uh, mounted, if it's on the bicycle, it needs to be mounted so that it is facing upwards. And I will mount this on the stand so in a way to be able to do the bleeding properly. We will do that now and continue with the demonstration of the bleeding process. Trying to make this parallel to the ground so that the air is on top and it can freely go out. Now for this I will use zip ties and for brake bleeding I like to have zip ties on hand. Anything can be fixed using zip ties of course. This is hardcore do it yourself and it's very hot now in the summer. We need to keep the garage door open and the neighbors are very noisy. So it's very interesting. But I hope that you will be able to understand what I'm saying. Okay. Sitting nice and tight. Good. Now we can go on with the bleeding process. For that, we will need one 7 millimeter wrench in this case. I like this that are, I don't know the English term, but that are round, the one round end, because it stays nicely, so it can work. And I will attach a hose so the oil doesn't get just spilled directly over the the brake caliper and I will try to get it into a bucket. Okay. Of course, sometimes I forgot to mention that I was interrupted a few times. Uh, you cannot insert bleed block because there is too much oil in the system. In that case, before you insert the bleed block, you will need to loosen up the top part for bleeding so that some oil can be pushed out as you are pushing the pistons back with a tool like this or similar. And that's just one thing to note. Now we will continue with the bleed process. I will now unscrew the top part here because that is the procedure for this model. Holding with my hand so this doesn't slip. It's JIS top, Japanese industrial standard. It looks like a Philips but it is not Philips. So that's something to pay attention to when working with Shimano parts. I might add, we'll try to add a link to Amazon shop that sells GIS screwdrivers. They are not the cheapest, but the only three sizes are needed for Shimano. One and two most of the time, and the third size very very seldom. Okay, so now I'll put this here. I want to clean rag here so I don't contaminate anything because I don't want any dirt entering the brake system. Okay. Now this is a rubber that works like it, as the level of oil is decreased in the system it gets a bit sucked in so that there's no air bubbles creating and vice versa so it's a bit it, it works a bit okay explain it properly 
screen. Okay. okay. Now we're ready to start the bleeding process almost. There's just one more thing to note. This bleed nipple will get loosened and if we do that there will be no air coming in directly because this is full of brake fluid. However, I don't want to keep it loose just in case. I will do the procedure in the following way. Some brake models are bled from this part using a syringe to push the brake fluid inside and explain the principles in the previous video, but in this case it is this small like small container that needs to be filled with brake fluid. So we pump this lever, we open this to push the old fluid out, and that is how we flush the system. And the important thing to note is that when I when I pump the lever, I will hold it pressed with my hand. Only then, while I'm holding it press, putting some force, will I unscrew this nipple, which will allow the brake lever to be pu pushed all the way to the bars, pushing the old fluid with dirt, water and any air bubbles out. And before I release it, I will close this. Because if I leave it open, once I release this, air will be pulled back in. In this way I have a small curve going up, so not too much air will be dragging, but we will still have air sucked in when we release this in, in like this. So some will oil will be pushed this way, but here we have oil, oil seal, so no air will be entered inside the system, but in this part, at this end, we will have air. So I want to avoid that. Before I start, I, want, I will just gently, before pumping the lever, gently unscrew this, because it's usually very tight, so you cannot do it with one hand easily. Okay. Okay, now, I, I've made it workable. That's the, the necessary evil, especially with this setup using zip ties. And obviously we are not uh, recycling anything in Serbia, it's impossible, so this goes to the bucket and to the regular garbage disposal, unfortunately. No, no other way. Now another thing I want to do here is to make the lever travel higher using this setup, so that the bleed process is done more quickly. And now, here's the procedure. I pump this a few times, then hold it, pushing it with my thumb. I will release this, dirty and old fluid will come out, then I will close it, only then releasing the lever. So, here goes. Now I'm closing it, you see some bubbles and old dirty fluid, and I release it, and then I will do it again. close before releasing the lever. This is important to keep in sync or you will have problems. Now another thing to note is to not let this be completely drained because air will be sucked in from this end and you will have to do the whole process of bleeding in order to remove bubbles, air bubbles again. The dirt will not be a problem in this later phase because you will already have clean fluid inside but you will again have to waste fluid and use uh, more time in order to remove the air. So we will be sure to keep checking this and topping it up. And we will definitely have some spillage, so it's good to cover any sensitive parts of bicycle or frame to prevent that from getting... Okay. I also want to tap here a bit to make sure any bubbles on this end get out this way. And I also want to now move this lever a bit closer, which pushes the piston a bit outwards, allowing more oil to enter the system and preferably loosening any leftover air bubbles. Now again, still no air coming out and the fluid that coming out looks very clean. Okay, I will tap this a bit to make sure any, any bubbles 
come out. I will now again move this the other way around to make the procedure a bit quicker with fewer openings and closes. Okay, I think this is good now, almost. I'm minding the level here and checking if there's any bubbles coming out of this way or, or this end. Now it's almost completely over. I'll top it up once more. I will again move this piston, this final bleeding, I do it with the piston all the way out so that there's maximum amount of oil or black fluid in the system and any air gets flushed out. Okay, I'll just do one more just to be on the safe side, it's all good. I'm getting a few air bubbles coming out still, so I will redo this procedure until there's no air bubbles coming out. But I also check whether this is having a good solid connection so that the bubbles are coming from the brake system, not from the outside. Okay, now we got clean fluid, no bubbles, good. That means we're done. I can now tighten this to the final torque, good. I will now top this up. The caliper is extracted all the way out. That's important. Good. Master brake since piston or whatever it is called in English properly. Closing this. Now we need to close this part. Putting back the seal, I can expect more brake fluid to be pushed out and either put a rag beneath or be ready to clean it. I'm, I didn't put it down with my hands all the way. I want this properly aligned and then I will screw it in. I managed not to lose any screws, which is surprising. Okay, putting one screw in place, making sure it's threaded properly, then another. Okay, now I'll just get them close, not tightening yet. I want it done nice and evenly, nicely and evenly. Okay. I'm going to push out fluid, no air coming in, okay, now I'm holding to keep it in place so that the tube doesn't slip, there it's tightened, okay now I can clean the excess oil. This is practically finished. We now should have the brake performing properly. And I can use this to make it stick more out and have shorter travel. In case you're using only two fingers for braking, like I like. So it's, it's done. The bleeding procedure. I hope I've explained everything properly. We will remove this now. I expect more fluid to come out this way. There we go. All goes into the bucket. Okay. Removing the tool. We will remove the bleed block now and put clean this of any oil and then we will put new brake pads. I will not be demonstrating how to put brake pads in this video, it will be done in a separate video and it's, I think it's not very complicated. And that's it, uh, I hope I explained everything that it can be understood and uh, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, use the comment section or on my website bygram.com. That's it, cheers.